Okay, uh, let's start. So today uh, we are going to talk about one layer uh, deeper inside this uh, machine learning system stack. Um, we are going more specifically to talk about this computational graph. Um, and this computational graph is actually a kind of uh, novel or modern way of thinking about some mathematical expression uh, that provides several opportunities. Uh, and you will see uh, it is nature to see easily what are those systems opportunities, uh, specifically with respect to somehow kind of optimization that you might be familiar at the compiler level. So you remember, right, in traditional um, um, software systems, you write code and basically uh, the compiler will take care of some of the deeper optimization based on the code that you have written. And the essential part, part of the optimization you remember in compiler, I'm sure you, some of you have taken compiler course, is, is, is also somehow based on some sort of a structured graph. Um, if you are familiar with ASD, um, um, basically provide some opportunities for some deeper optimization. And more or less here, we are talking about kind of similar thing, but maybe a slightly different. Um, so let's, um, let's get deeper here and maybe provide some, discuss some intuition, um, what we mean specifically. Maybe let's switch back to some notes to discuss about um, some ideas, right? Let's just start by a very simple example, right? Imagine that we have um, kind of expression, a mathematical expression we want to construct a, a computational graph based on it. And this mathematical expression could be any arbitrary mathematical expression, but in particular, you will see uh, that what, how you could translate what you have learned from this simple mathematical uh, expression could be arbitrary mathematical expression, how you could use the same intuition uh, when you're dealing with um, an, a model uh, like neural network, a logistic regression, or typically any, any kind of uh, machine learning model that you would like to, um, to optimize, basically to minimize the loss function as, as you're familiar with. Right. Um, let's just start with some some maybe example um, to to make things um, concrete. Let's imagine that uh, we we have let's say uh, we have uh, expression like um, um, maybe um, it's a very simple expression, right? And we have um, some inputs, uh, right? And um, yeah. Right. So this is the expression, the mathematical expression that we have, right? So this is your, um, these are variables, right? All of these are variables. And this is also a constant. Um, and you have some operations here. You have plus here, you have multiplication here, okay? So you have some variables uh, and you have, um, you have also parentheses here, right? Um, and you have some operation operators uh, on top of these these variables. And you see already here some structures started to appear, right? So, for example, you could um, you could see that maybe yes, um, maybe you could um, use these uh, and basically um, assign these. Um, different uh, computation to, to other intermediate uh, variables, right? Maybe, maybe you can call this like C equal A plus B, right? And, and D equal B um, plus two, right? And then for calculating E, you only need to multiply C with D, okay? So these, these two essentially are, uh, are the same. Uh, we just did this uh, intermediate assignment of 
of these simple terms or expression assigning it to uh, some new variables c and d so the same thing right uh, we did not violate any any kind of mathematical um, expression here and then then you could based on this this structure you could build some um, some some graphs right so for example you could start with with your um, initial variable right um, what are the initial variable um, like um, you see a and b are your initial variable right so a b okay and based on a and b you we we have some intermediate variable here we have one intermediate variable here c equal a plus b so we connect a and b here and then we have another intermediate variable d is basically b plus two um, so we connect b with d and you see the reason why we connect b with d right so um, it is it is very easy to understand but we make it a little bit more formal later on and then we have uh, we have this e right so we have this e basically is c multiplication with d right so we have something like that okay so more formally you can think about um, these these um, um, This is a structure. Um, so in, within this a structure, uh, um, you see some nodes, right? So you see some nodes, um, right? Um, and you see some arrows. So these these nodes, um, you see what what is uh, what is their what are their function, right? So their function is really simple. Um, what the nodes does, they they represent some sort of computation right um and 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 the edges somehow uh connect this computation to to other um uh, to other uh, variables you can think about data dependencies between these um, computational nodes right so each node basically does some sort of simple computation as you can see um and the edges um so here the computation is like plus here is multiplication and the edges represent the data dependencies right so for example for calculating e we need these two nodes c and d um so the connection or the structure you see is it somehow uh, becomes obvious and you can make a correspondence between these these two, right? The mathematical expression that you have, as well as this structure. And this structure is not arbitrary, right? So it's, um, you see that it is directed, right? And you see that um, it is ASIC, right? This is the whole structure is, is called, if you're familiar, uh, we discuss in, in the AR course, it's some sort of a DAG, right? Directed acyclic graph um, so it has some well-defined uh, structure uh, within uh, within what we have and then um, we start thinking okay now why we want to um, represent this what are the immediate um, opportunities that you see with this uh, with this structure can anyone wants to uh, volunteer to say what what are the what might be the possible benefits of, of such structures that we want to talk about? No repetition. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, since each, um, each, each node appears once, so there will be no rep repetition and once about whenever we are done with that with a node, we don't go back to it. 
Yeah, that's a very good point, right? So uh, whenever uh, we want to have access to a node, so for example, when we calculate D here, we don't need to, to basically to repeat this again for particular value of, uh, of B, right? Um, so basically, if we need some reuse of computation, it is very much possible um, to reuse um, this computation. What else? The order of computation is explicit, so we don't have any order of operations issues or dependencies. Okay. Dependency and, issues. Right. And then what these independencies provide? What are the benefits of such, you know, independent reordering of things? I'm not sure what you're getting at. So, for example, I, I guess what you meant is that basically, um, so for calculating E in this uh, example, um, what you need is, is really C and D, right? Um, but for example, for calculating D, you don't really need C, or for calculating C, you don't really you do need D, right? So you have like two, two parallel passes here, right? Which are independent. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's computationally efficient, right? Because you can do those separately. You, you can do them at the same time with different, you don't have to, you can do them at the same time in parallel. Exactly, right? So it becomes obvious that you can do this computation in parallel. So parallelism opportunities, right? This kind of graphical uh, representation, uh, it provides opportunity. I mean, in this case, it's so simple, right? So maybe even with this structure, you could guess that. But if you have like massive uh, kind of uh, expression, it wouldn't be possible by looking at the expression to identify these parallelism opportunities, right? So this, this graphical representation provides some uh, optimization opportunities as I discussed with, for example, for the compiler, similar thing here, like here for machine learning, we have also compilers, right? And like, you can think about like, graph-based optimization, right? Graph coloring, whatever you can imagine and you have learned in graph theory, you can apply it here for optimization, right? You can, um, you can optimize calculation of, uh, of your model a lot, uh, different orders of magnitude if you are able to, to exploit that. And this is very, very much uh, important when, again, um, back to these layers, uh, because the layer below is harder, right? Uh, we want to uh, optimize it. For example, if we have GPU in the hardware, we want to parallelize it and like assign it to different cores. So things could be calculated in parallel a lot more efficiently uh, with this exploitation of this structure. So that's, that's kind of the benefit or the connection that uh, uh, that why these um, computation graphs are important uh, for machine learning systems, right? But the other benefit also is, is the connection with respect to the optimization of, uh, of the algorithms, right? So um, we discussed about like several different type of machine learning models. We discussed again about uh, logistic regression. We discussed about neural networks. We discussed about uh, naive based and in all of that we have some sort of you know a loss function uh, we want to uh, we want to optimize and in all of these um, you remember uh, we needed to uh, to calculate um, somehow some uh, gradients right so uh, if you remember for example for um, for logistic regression, what we had was, right, uh, we had some sort of uh, weights, right, uh, input, um, right, so this is, um, this was, um, right, this was your simple model, and uh, based on this, this model, uh, you, um, you had some sort of uh, uh, loss function, uh, right, uh, um, that you wanted um, to uh, to optimize, right? So um, 
when you calculate this activation, you pass it through, um, you know, uh, the sigmoid function, this uh, transformation to, to make these uh, into some probabilities and, and you wanted to use this uh, true label uh, in order to calculate this uh, loss. And for doing that, you needed to calculate this uh, gradient of the loss with respect to uh, what you had as a, as a variable in your model, uh, the weights. Um, and, and you use this calculation, uh, right? Um, um, you use this calculation in order to, to plug it in uh, in, uh, in the um, optimization algorithm, if you remember this stochastic gradient descent um, in order to find the optimal uh, parameters um, that give you um, that give you the right model uh, that makes as few mistakes as possible uh, with respect to, to your training set, right? So, so basically, the calculation of this gradient uh, of the loss is is important, and like the the other benefit we want to uh, get at is whether these computational um, graphs provide some opportunities for us for calculating these uh, more efficiently. And you can think about like this uh, within this computational graph. Maybe you want to map this loss like here, and here like these are your inputs, right? So. Um, and then you want to exploit this, this uh, structure um, in order to give you some, some of these calculations by default or automatically. Um, something in the context of neural network, it is called backprop, right? And we'll discuss about detail, but I want to now make this connection uh, for you to reason about why such um, um, graphical notation, these computational graphs might be useful in this connection, um, right? And, um, and within this context, um, let's explore some of these, um, these opportunities in um, this kind of a structure that we have, right? Um, so in order to make things clear, let's um, read all this. Um, Right, so we have um, A, we have B, then we have C. D. Okay, so now you can think about let's let's do some of these um, um, calculation, and we can think about calculation of the gradient uh, in in different ways, right? So um, there is one way is is a start from the inputs, right? Uh, going that way, a start from whatever we have in the input, calculating the gradient uh, of uh, calculating gradient from the beginning of the graph and propagating it throughout the graph until we, we get here. And at the end, we, uh, we get this um, um, calculation. Uh, so basically, we are interested in, uh, uh, in calculating how much uh, loss or how much E would change if we change, for example, B, right? Um, and we can we can do that, right? So, for example, here uh, you can start calculating this, right? So, um, so in this case, um, you can start calculating. Okay, um, uh, how much? For example, if you change if you change b in this case, right? Um, let's do this, right? Um, if you change b um, with respect to with respect to b, what is this? Right, B is, is now a variable, right? It's simple, right? Uh, what, is, what is the value for this? One. One, right? How about A? What is the, um, what is the derivative of A with respect to B? Oh. 
What is that? It's just zero. It's just zero, right? It's very simple, right? How about this node? Mm. How we can exploit the, uh, this structure to, to answer that? Wouldn't it also be just one? We can, you can concatenate the results of both of them or add them, I guess. Yeah, how? How? Like, I mean, so, I mean, we have a zero from one of them, we have a one from the other since the rules of derivation allow us to apply sums, derivatives of, uh, like, you know, to each of the terms independently. I mean, we can just add them. So C equals one. So here we want to calculate what? We want to calculate derivative of C with respect to B, right? So this is what we want to calculate, okay? And we have the expression here. Obviously, by looking at this expression, um, um, you can calculate it easily, right? Um, you know that the answer is, um, is essentially one, right? But we want to see whether you could have done some previous calculation um, that without looking at this expression, you could have calculated this value. Well, right, DCB, you just look, go ahead. DCDB is just DADB plus DBDB. Okay. We already know what the results of DADB and DBDB are, so. So you, you mean that we have this, we have this, we simply add them up? Well, because C is A plus B, if you take the derivative of the whole thing, you get DCDB equals DADB plus DBDB. So instead of calculating the derivative of A and B again, we already did that one time. We can just add those results together to get DCDB. Exactly, right? So, um, so basically, since you have done this calculation before, right? Um, calculating this uh, with, respect to, uh, with respect to B, um, basically is just adding adding whatever you have done before, right? Um, and add them up in this case would be one, right? Without looking at, um, at the expression, you could have, uh, have done this um, easily, right? Um, how about this? I mean, it's very similar, right? You D, 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 B is just D, B, D, B plus D, 2, D, B. And then you can, you only basically, all you have to do is you have to calculate D, 2, D, B, which is zero, and then add it to what you already have done, which is D, B, D, B. So essentially here we have explicitly this as well, right? So, and this is gradient of these two with respect to B, which is zero, right? That's right, right? So you have this calculation here, then you whatever uh, nodes uh, leads to this um, node here where you have here, you can simply add them up, right? Um, and then you get here one. How about this? Which one? Uh, the last one. So here we want to calculate the uh, gradient of E with respect to B, right? This is what we wanted to see, right? We wanted to calculate what is the, uh, what is the gradient of the, um, your final variable, right? The variable of interest, right? This intermediate variable was not the variable of interest. This E was the variable of interest, right? How we calculate this? Do you mean without knowing the function? Um, I think it applied chain rule. Chain rule, if we know the function. Okay, then. So I was asking, do you mean if we don't know the function of 
the function between C and D? Yes, that's what I what I'm asking. Yes. Okay. So what so, I mean, what is missing here? What is missing? I, mean, I feel like we've done all the calculations except for, I mean, like they were mentioning the, the, the product rule or the chain rule. Mm -hmm. um, would we, I mean, so like we could, we can look at this, we can look at the, the definition of E and then like from that decide what we need to do, like using the product rule, but then we can use the computation, the previous computations to um, arrive at the new assignment of E, right? So, so imagine that now you know this, um, this expression, right? So, um, so in order to drive this, um, how you drive this? For, for few seconds, let's imagine you don't want to exploit this uh, structure. How, how you do this using the chain rule? C, D, E, D, B. So this is the expression that you have, right? Um, so you need to, to apply the chain rule, right? Um, so it is C gradient of D with respect to what? B. B plus? D uh, derivative of C with respect to B. With respect to? No, I thought it'd be um, the derivative of C times D with respect to derivative of B. You tell me, um, can you, can you? Are we, we're not doing, isn't this product rule, not chain rule? You're right. right. So it would, it would just be the product of the derivatives and then plus each other, right? Or like one, so you'd have like DC, DD, times dc db times d plus dd db times c okay so it is derivative of what dc db derivative of e with respect to c right multiplied by derivative of c with respect to what oh okay b plus derivative of E with respect to the other variable, right? D multiplied by derivative of D with respect to derivative of what? C, B, sorry. Right? So this is, this is the expression that, that basically um, um, that basically you need uh, in order to calculate this um, derivative of E, right? Um, so basically is again, um, in order to calculate this, you, you have the chain rule, right? And product rule, you need to, to use books, right? Um, so it would be derivative of E with respect to one of its variable, um, multiplying of derivative of uh, of one of the variables with respect to B, right? And also doing the same uh, with, the, with respect to the other variable, right? Multiplying of the right derivative of D with respect to B, right? Um, this is what, um, this is how we want to calculate. So what we have here is, um, let's imagine what we have, right? Here we have derivative of C with respect to B, right? And we have derivative of D with respect to B, right? And what is missing is these two, right? derivative of E with respect to C and derivative of E with respect to D, okay? 
how we could have calculated those before? Could we? I don't we didn't know until now that we needed them, right? Right, but let's imagine that now we know that, right? How we could associate that with the with this uh, with this dark uh, in order next time um, to have those, right? Any idea how, how we should go after that? For the incoming, I mean, so we need E with the derivative of E with respect to C and derivative of E with respect to D. And I'll note that those are the same, those are the uh, parent nodes. Exactly. So I guess we can just so take the derivative of parent nodes. Exactly. Maybe we could assign them to, um, to the edges, right? Uh, maybe um, since, we, since we, here we need, for example, in this case, we need to have derivative, uh, the partial derivative of E with respect to with respect to C, which is coming from here, right? So we have E and C, maybe we could assign it here, right? Um, and this one, um, maybe we could assign it here, right? Um, okay. Um, um, so how, how we can uh, calculate this, right? Any idea? So what is what is the derivative of e uh, with respect to c? E. Is what? D. Is d right? That means, so, that means it's going to be the product of all other parent nodes apart from the you know, particular node. Right. Um, so derivative of e with respect to c is d, right? And derivative of um, e with respect to D is the other one, right? Is, um, is C, right? Okay, uh, that's uh, feeling better, right? Um, so if we would have had this calculation before, the calculation of, of this would be trivial, right? So we have had everything there. Right. How about the, the other nodes down down the line? So here you see that derivative of E with respect to the incoming node. Right. So let's let's maybe do that for the other um, other part of the uh, the graph as well. Right. So imagine that, for example. Um, in this case, uh, for this node, we have derivative of C with respect to what now? A. With respect to A, right? What is that? Derivative of C with respect to A. Is e. easy. Come on. E. Zero. Derivative of C with respect to A is zero. Oh, it's one. Sorry, one. One, right? How about derivative of C with respect to B? It's also one. Also one. How about this one? Derivative of D with respect to B. What is that? One. One. Derivative of D with respect to, in this case, two, right? Or maybe you could you could name it constant with respect to constant. What is that? That's one or zero. So zero, right. Um, uh, basically, here you have constant, right? Um, maybe you could you could even like you could exclude this part as well, right? Because it was trivial. You don't need that because um, you cannot really, you don't have such entity, right? Because you cannot vary. So this means that what is the derivative of variable by changing the other variable a little bit? Since this is constant, you cannot change that a little bit. So this is, this is not a defined entity, right? So you don't need that 
that part. But I made it clear uh, to, to make a sense out of it, right? Um, so we have um, so we have these these um, so assigning to each of these um, um, arrows we have some uh, partial derivatives right partial derivative of whatever we have target whatever we have um, we have uh, down there right. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense, right? Um, so. And you see already um, that if you would have had these um, calculation, then um, then everything else, right? So imagine that you would have calculated all of these orange um, partial derivatives beforehand, right? The rest um, is simply uh, reusing those, right? So. For example, for calculating um, the um, um, uh, the, uh, the derivative of C with respect to B, uh, we already have the answer, right? Uh, we already have the answer, which is uh, which is one, uh, right? Um, you see that these two um, two nodes uh, leads there, um, and uh, for um, um, for calculating uh, with respect to with respect to um, calculating a partial derivative of e with respect to um, with respect to b, uh, we already have the answer, right? So we could uh, we could um, um, calculate. Um, so we have this pass. Also, we have this pass. Uh, we could plug in whatever we have already there, uh, multiplying by um, by these guys, uh, because we also need the edges, right? Uh, and then we already have uh, have the answer, right? So here, more explicitly, for calculating uh, partial derivative of e with respect to b, um, we have um, this guy, which is one multiplying, right? This is really plugging in this here, right? Multiplying by b plus um, we have this guy one multiplying it by by c, right? So we have already the answer because we have already calculated um, uh, calculated things before. And like if if we are talking about, let's imagine that we already have instantiated the um, the stuff here. What color I choose, right? So let's imagine that for uh, for A, we assign it to three. For B, we assign it to five, right? Um, and then, um, and then we could plug it in uh, here. Um, so here we get B equal to uh, seven, uh, C equal to three plus uh, five uh, is eight, right? And then um, this becomes um, obvious, right? This becomes 15, okay? The derivative of E with respect to, with respect to uh, B, okay? So basically you only need to traverse uh, the graph uh, until, to, uh, until you reach the end node um, and then you have had already all calculation uh, for calculating this this partial derivative, but think about it. Like right? in this calculation, you you basically started from the beginning, right? Um, so basically, you have had this calculation before, uh, and this calculation, these partial derivatives are easy, right? Um, you did not need to calculate. Uh, you did not even need to have chain rule, right? So it was with respect to one of the variables involved in, in, in your target nodes. Uh, so the calculation of these were a lot simpler, so you could pre-calculate those. And then 
what we did is, is that we assigned the numbers to these input variables and we just propagate the information throughout the graph until uh, we get what we wanted to have, right? So if we would have calculated this partial derivative assigning to these edges, then the rest was trivial, okay? But again, um, this is forward pass, right? So we have forward pass, but we also need to have backward pass. And why we need to have backward pass, let's step back and think about it. The forward pass, what you get is um, the partial derivative of your target variable with respect to one of your inputs, okay? In this case, B. So if we wanted to have um, the partial derivative uh, with respect to, of your output with respect to other variable, A, uh, we needed to basically go back uh, and do calculation again, right? Uh, we needed to uh, go back and uh, recalculate these stuff at least, right? So you saw that um, we needed, so we took this partial derivative with respect to B, okay? So we needed to at least go back and recalculate the partial derivative of the nodes um, in order to, um, in order to again calculate this this entity that we want. We can do that the same way, but we need to do the same again, uh, doing the same forward pass. It was easy, but it still is two different computations. Uh, but you remember for, uh, for the um, um, optimization of like something like neural network or logistic regression, again, back to what uh, we discussed here, where, where it was, what, what we discussed here, we needed to calculate the, um, the uh, loss gradient of the loss function with respect to, uh, with respect to all, uh, all inputs. And if you want to, let's, uh, let's maybe, um, uh, do the same kind of graph construction with this, right? So imagine that we have, uh, let's say, we have um, um, X1 and X2 here, right? We have two, two inputs. Um, so we are talking about two dimensional space, right? Um, we have X1 and X2, and again, this could be a vector, but here the size is two. Um, here, obviously for uh, the weight size would be the same size as your input. So for each of these, you also need to have weight one and weight two, right? And you have this guy, B as well, right? So these are your input uh, variables, right? This is for logistic regression. And um, what you need to do is, is to calculate this, uh, um, Calculate this guy. This is the activation that uh, you need, right? And uh, the calculation is is basically um, you see that you can think about the computational graph, right? And this computational graph, if you think contrast it with uh, the uh, the kind of graph that we used. Um, so we remember for constructing the logistic regression, we thought about this x one. X2, and we thought about this as like W1, W2, right? This kind of stuff. This is slightly different because W1, W2 becomes also the nodes, some different nodes in this computation graph. So make sure that you don't confuse, you're not confused with the graph that we used to build this, um, this type of model. That was slightly different. This is computation graph. So these, these, each of these are different nodes, right? or different variables that we have. And then um, we have an intermediate. This is like your representation, um, right? So this is, um, so you need to connect all of this to this. This is um, W1, X1 plus W2, X2 plus B. Right, so this is this is your activation function. Okay, once you have this activation, then um, then you uh, you you need to have another node because you need to do another computation. That computation is the sigmoid, right? 
So you have another node for sigmoid, basically um, sigmoid, you need to pass H to this sigmoid um, in order to, um, to give you the probabilities. And then once you have these probabilities, then you, um, uh, you can go and have your loss function, right? And for loss function, what you need is this, uh, this guy, right? Plus the true label. This is, this is the true label, okay? So you have this kind of, um, this kind of computational, um, computational graph. And here, what you need is, is to, um, in order to, to optimize, if you remember the, uh, the algorithm for stochastic gradient descent, you need to have had the gradient, uh, the partial derivative, or the, you need to calculate the gradient of your loss with respect to, um, um, with respect to, to weights, right? So let's imagine with respect to, um, so here, Mathematically, here it was the thing you needed to calculate. Which W was W1 and W2. Okay. Or more explicitly, you needed to calculate this uh, partial derivative of L with respect to W1, partial derivative of L with respect to W2. Okay. Um, so what you, what you need now, uh, is that, uh, can you have, can you exploit this uh, structure in order to give you this calculation in one pass instead of doing that, uh, to us, right? And here you have like two weights, but imagine that because we have two, two, two input, um, 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 two-dimensional space. But imagine that instead of having a logistic regression, we have a deep neural network that you have million parameters. If you have millions or 10 millions or 100 millions or even billion parameter, you cannot do this for what past billion times, right? <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Uh, can, you, can you get something uh, this calculation in one pass? Yes, um, it is possible to, uh, to get this calculation in one pass if you do this backward. And that's why uh, it is called basically backprop. Um, and we, we are going to, to use the same examples in order to see how, how we can really do this, um, uh, do this um, in a backward fashion, right? Um, in order to... Um, in order to uh, get what what we uh, we wanted to uh, to get, right? So let's uh, let's maybe quickly do that again. Let's uh, construct this um, graph. So we have um, we have yes a b, and then we had c. And then we had B, and then we had E, we see D. Okay, let's start from, um, and, and let's annotate here what, um, let's now imagine that we did the thing and, and we, um, we calculated these, these guys, right? So uh, we calculated the, um, What was this E with respect to E? E with respect to this guy, C. C with respect to this guy, A. C with respect to this guy, B. D with respect to this guy, B. Okay, so imagine that now we are we know <laughs> what we needed to calculate beforehand. And let's, let's start from, instead of doing forward, now let's do backward pass. So here, we start from here, right? Uh, we start uh, here, what we need to calculate is really calculating 
uh, gradient uh, partial derivative of E with respect to what? With respect to itself, right? Um, um, so we want to, to start backward. So basically what we want to get is that uh, what is the partial derivative of each of these input variable with respect to the change in, in the, um, um, with respect to, uh, with respect to, uh, sorry, what, what is, what is the uh, uh, change in the error or the loss um, or the final output when we change the input, right? Uh, for all input, uh, input variables. So we start by, uh, by this partial derivative, we know that like each variable with respect to itself is, is one. And then we need to calculate these two guys. So what we have here is, um, is what? Um, what is the, um, how, how we can calculate this? Any thoughts? Come again, please. So basically here, what to clarify, we want to calculate partial derivative of E. So basically, um, if you remember, again, to contrast here by forward, we started deciding what variable we want to change, right? We started by, okay, we want to change B and we calculate everything, all of this with respect to B, okay? And then we said that in order to do that for A, we needed to do all calculation again for A. Now we start from yeah, end, uh, we start changing E a little bit, right? Um, and then we do the calculation backward, right? So um, for for this node would be what is the uh, what is the partial derivative of e when we change um, c, right? For this node would be partial derivative of e when we change d, right? You see you see the um, the idea here, right? Yeah. So what would be the uh, what would be the value here? That the d. Uh, that be d. Why? I said d. You mean d, right? Yes, I mean I said the letter d. Yeah. Right. Correct. Right. How about this? E with respect to d. That should be C. How about this guy? This is, this is, would be. That would just be one. E with respect to. Oh, E respect to A. Um, a, for here, we want to partial derivative of E with respect to B, right? How we calculate this? Well, you can technically take um, you can take um, a plus b and substitute that in with e is equal to a plus b times d. You can do distribution. You get um, uh, d a, a d plus b d, and you know b d. One question. One question. Sorry. Uh, before we jump into that, um, how you told me this was d. Where did this come from? Where did you look at? Which one can you, could you circle which value you're talking about? Um, this, this thing. No, I said it was D, both yeah. the first and second time. Right, but how, how you calculated that it, it, it is D? Um, so we know E is C times D, right? And we're looking for the der derivative with respect to D. So we can but, treat- But the aim, was not, the aim was not looking at expression. The aim was looking what we had before. Did we have this before? Like, or some elements of this before? No, we did not. We did not? We had it, if you look carefully.
B plus two. Where where is that? Where is that? So D E, uh, I think it, it's equal to D, but D equals to B plus two. Yeah, but I'm asking where without looking at the expression. Imagine that we don't know this expression. We want to exploit whatever we calculated before. Can we still have calculated this? Can we or not? Come on, it's, it's there. You should really see that. Don't you? Again, we want to calculate this. You said that it is D, right? You said that it is D. And that's the true answer, but that the answer comes from looking at this. Uh, sorry, looking at um, oh, come on. Let's... But you look at this expression. We don't want to look at this expression. Okay. We want to have calculated this, this partial derivative without looking at this expression. Did we have had this value somewhere? Look carefully, we have it. Oh, it equals on D, uh, divide D A plus D uh, divide D B. Where? Is there really? I mean, we, we did it during the forward prop. Where is that exactly? On that edge between C and E. Yeah, exactly. It's here. Look at it. It's here. Right? So we already have this value. Right? So we already have this value on the edge because we already have whatever we had on the edge, right? We said that this, this time we calculated this before, whatever we needed on the edge. And these things on the edge was really simple. Mm. How about this? Did we have it? Yeah. Yes, it's here. Same. Right? The same, we have it. We have it already. How about this guy? How about this? Do we have it? No. Uh, technically we do. We, can, we have um, on the edge, we had the derivative of C with respect to derivative of A, and we had the derivative oh, so of E with C. respect to C. So we can just... Um, Multiply them. Multiply and cancel the derivatives of C when we get derivative of E over A. Exactly, right? So here, what you have here is, so, so you want to calculate the derivative of E with respect to A, right? Here you have derivative of C with respect to A. Here you have derivative of E with respect to C, right? Mm -hmm. So if you multiply this together, what you get is that if you multiply the derivative of C with respect to A, uh, multiplied by the derivative of, um, of um, E with respect to C, here you get the derivative of E with respect to A, right? So on, you only need, need to multiply this, whatever you have on the path. And really, like if you, if you go from this guy, this okay. node to this node, like you, you have all expression you need. You just need to multiply them together, right? How about this guy? Because we also need to calculate this guy as well. Do we have all of these info? 
Yes. Where is that? Um, BE DD um, times DD DB. Okay. Say it again. Derivative of partial derivative of E with respect to D that we calculated in the forward pass multiplied by derivative of D with respect to B. This guy. Yes. And the other one that you mentioned was this one? Yes. So partial, so this guy, in order to calculate this, partial derivative of e with respect to d, e with respect to d, d. multiplied by derivative of d with respect to d. e. Is that it? Yeah. Yes. Are you sure? We need to add partial derivative of e with respect to c times partial derivative of c with respect to b2 because that's two two parts why because two parts lead from node e to b exactly right here you see again exploiting whatever information you have in this DAG structure you have this path and you have this path, right? So you should exploit all information. This thing is related to this path, right? So the yeah. downward path, but you also need to have the upward path, right? Plus partial derivative of... Um, e with respect to C. E with respect to C multiplied by partial derivative of C with respect to... B, right? Yes. So this is the upper pass, right? And this is the down pass. And then you are done, right? So you get this partial derivative of E with respect to B. So let's think about this. This is very important, right? Think, think. So here, um, so think about what you used really for calculating this, right? So you for calculating these two entities, these two entities was really the entity that you wanted. Why? Because this E guy is your target variable. And let's imagine this is your loss function. Get back to this uh, up. So here you needed to calculate these two guys. Partial derivative of loss with respect to all, all of your weight uh, weight elements, right? All of these guys, right? Okay, so whatever you had in the input. Uh, in one pass, right? We discussed about one pass and really here we did in one pass, right? So, um, and we, we used basically whatever we have calculated before by using some information from the graph. And that was really how many pass we have between two nodes, right? So for example, when we did this calculation, when we had here, like we, we had these two nodes, like how many paths we have this in, these two nodes connected? One pass, right? And we, we exploited whatever we had on the path. For this node, the same. We exploited whatever we had on the path. For, for this node, how many paths? We had one pass. We multiply these two guys together in order to calculate this guy. Right, it was simple here. For this guy, we had two passes, right? Again, exploiting the structure. And we calculated this multiplication plus this multiplication in order to drive this, right? So we exploited whatever we had in the causal, in, sorry, in, in this um, DAG structure, this computation graph structure. Nothing more than that. And uh, within one pass, we calculated uh, the partial derivative of the outcome with respect to all inputs, right, in one pass. And if we had like million inputs, right, if we have million inputs, we did the same, right? We go back, backward in one pass, and we would have gotten all the um, partial derivative that we wanted to have with respect to all the inputs variable, right? And that's the power of computation graph, right? in one pass, backward, forward, you saw that it was not possible. Forward, uh, we needed to choose like what is the variable we want to change. 
And then at the end, we get this partial derivative of, of the uh, output with respect to this, this guy, this variable that we decided. We could do the same in another task, right? But if we have had million passes, we would have needed to do this calculation like million times. But in backward pass, we did it once and we have had the same, we have had all the um, um, uh, entities that we needed to have for, uh, for plugging it into the, um, into the optimization, right? And again, like this was, this was the connection, right? Uh, this was the connection for, for optimi optimizing in the stochastic gradient descent, we need to calculate this element. And if, we, if this element was a million uh, elements vector, right? We needed to, we, we could do that into one backward pass. And this is what is called backprop. And that's why it's famous and why it is useful, right? Uh, typically in highly parameterized spaces such deep neural network where we have uh, million parameters and uh, we need to do it efficiently. Um, is that clear? Yes. Yep. Very good. So that's, that's basically uh, is the connection and why such a structure like uh, computational graphs uh, are important because, um, because of two important things. Uh, one, uh, is is that uh, you can uh, exploit the uh, structure to parallelize computation, like to map it to different uh, cores, right? Um, and we'll talk about it later on. This is connected to hardware architecture, uh, but also you can do some interesting calculation of gradient, like backward in one pass, and you get whatever you needed in one pass, and that's cool. Um, so these are two, two essential important properties of this structure that makes things cool and efficient uh, for, for optimization process. That's it. Um, so I think um, we are done here. Let's just stop here and talk to you next week. See you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Professor. I thank you.